Hey, this is Arlo Leach, and I've been working hard to bring a bunch of new features to my Setlist Maker and Band Helper apps. I'll show you the most requested features here, but you can also check the release notes page on the app website for a complete list. Also, I'm showing Setlist Maker for iOS, but all the new features you see here are available in Band Helper, and most are available in the Android versions of both apps. Let's start with the biggest update and that's the ability to attach videos to your songs and play them back in the app. Some people have video files that are set up with backing tracks and scrolling lyrics combined into one file. Other people project videos behind the stage as a special effect while they perform. Either way, you can now manage these videos along with all your other info. Setlist Maker treats a video like a document, not like a recording, because it takes up space on the screen and you need the actual video file, not just a link to an online video. You can copy the video into the app using Open In from another app or using iTunes file sharing, just like you would with any document. Then you can edit a song and tap Add Documents. And select your video. And now we can click the document icon and the video appears. And of course we can view the song in a show and the video appears there as well. You can attach multiple videos and switch between them. Or switch between videos, documents, or lyrics, whatever is attached for a given song. Attaching videos requires an in-app purchase for Setlist Maker users, and it's included for free with all Band Helper accounts. Here's another feature that's less flashy, but could be useful for more people. Let's say you're in a rehearsal and you come up with a cool part that you want to remember, maybe a guitar lick or a vocal harmony. If you're using a layout that contains the recording controls, you can now record your idea directly into the app as an audio file. First, tap this record button, and the progress bar changes to a level meter so you can see if your device mic is in a good position. Then tap the play button to start recording. So I'm recording my voice now, la 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 la. When you're done, tap the stop button. You'll be prompted to enter a name for the recording you just made. It's good to include a part of the song name so you can identify the recording if it gets separated from this song later. Okay, now we can play the new recording back in the app just like any other recording. So I'm recording my voice now, la 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 la. And if we look at the recordings attached to the song, we see it listed there. You can create multiple recordings for each song, and you can delete them from the recordings list if you no longer need them. Like the videos, recording audio also requires an in-app purchase for Setlist Maker users, and it's also included for free with all Band Helper accounts. Let's go now to the smart lists, which offer a way to access all of the performance functionality in the app without creating a specific set list. In the past, the smart lists weren't actually very smart. They were just a list of all your songs sorted in different ways. Well, now you can create your own smart lists and do a lot more with them. Let's say I want to see a list of songs that I've performed in the last few months, sorted by tag, but excluding any songs colored orange. I'll tap the plus button at the top of the list of smart lists and enter a name. And then I can add a filter for date performed. and a filter for not orange.
and then I can set the sorting by tag. As I make these changes, I can see the song list in the left column changing in real time. When I'm done, I'll go back, and here's my smart list. Of course, I can edit it and make further changes, or copy it, or make a new one. So you can create all kinds of useful views into your database with this feature. Now let's look at some new capabilities with documents and annotations. I'll select this song, which has a document, and notice this new Tools button in the top right corner. The app used to have a document toolbar that appeared when you tapped the center of the document, but that confused a lot of people because they didn't know it was there, or they didn't know how to get rid of it when it appeared. So now we have this button which is always visible. You can tap it to bring up the same functions that were on the document toolbar. So this is where you access the annotation functions. I'll tap Annotate, and now the annotation toolbar appears. And this toolbar now has multiple levels because of some new tools. If I tap the pen tool, I move to a secondary toolbar with all the pen colors, including a new black pen. Then I can tap this little back button here and tap the highlighter tool, which takes me to a secondary toolbar with all the highlighter colors, including a new pink highlighter. Now I'll go back again and tap the text tool, which is new. This gives me a choice of background colors, and I'll select one, and this creates a colored box on the screen that I can type text into. After I've entered some text, I can move it around, resize it, or rotate it. I can also resize the text in the box by pinching it. When I'm done with the annotations, I'll go back to this Tools button and select Save Annotations, and now everything is locked in place. One more addition to the Annotations function is that I no longer need a document to add annotations to a song. I'll select this song that has no document attached, so I just see this placeholder text here. But the Tools button is still available, so I'll select Annotate again, and now I have a blank space to draw into. I can use all the annotation tools as before, and they will be saved with the song. It's just like I have a plain white document attached to the song that I'm drawing onto. So this gives you some new options for what you can display when you view your songs. Now, if you are using documents, there is a new option to add them to the app. The two options for adding documents have always been to copy them into the app using the Open In feature in another app, or using iTunes file sharing on your computer. Now there's a third option if your documents are stored in a cloud service or an app that supports the new document exchange capabilities in iOS 8 and newer. Let's go to the Documents list, and there's a new Import button at the top of the list, and that opens a list of compatible import sources. I have the Dropbox app installed, so that appears here, and I can select that to browse my Dropbox. I can select a document, and it copies right into the app. So now I can add documents without going back and forth between different apps. If you have songs stored as Chord Pro or OnSong documents, there's a different import option that you can use. Instead of displaying these files as documents in the app, you can use them to create new songs, which you can then use with all the other app functionality. Let's go to the Songs list and tap the Import button. And besides the existing batch import options, we now have options to import a Chord Pro or OnSong file. It says Single because we can only import these files one at a time. Again, I can browse my Dropbox, and I'll select a Chord Pro file that I've stored there. And now the app creates a new song using the metadata and the lyrics from inside that file. So if you have a good source for Chord Pro files, or if you want to migrate songs that you've set up in OnSong, you can quickly create your songs with this feature. We're getting into some smaller features now, but these could be convenient for you if you're aware of them. You might have noticed that this songs list has several buttons that it could appear, but there isn't usually room for all of them. You can go to Settings, Appearance, Song Buttons in Narrow Lists to turn off buttons you don't need, but maybe you still need one of these buttons sometimes. Well, now there's another option for a More button. 
I'll turn that on and go back to the songs list. And now I see this new button with three dots. If I tap that, I can access the other buttons that were hidden from the list. So now I have access to all the hidden buttons, and I only have to give up the space for one new button. This More button is also used for some nice shortcuts when I edit a show and I want to edit the songs in the set list. For every song, set heading, and pause in the list, this button now appears, and it offers shortcuts to move the songs from one set to another or move whole sets in relation to each other. So this avoids some scrolling if you want to move a song from one set to another, and if you want to rearrange the sets in your show, it's much easier now than it was before. You can also use this button to assign names to the sets and pauses, which you used to do by tapping the set or pause rows. Speaking of naming the sets and pauses, each of these has a new capability. For set names, you can now specify that the contents of a set do not count toward the calculated duration of a show. This is nice if you have a one-hour set, but you want to add a second set containing a few extra songs, just in case you have time for a couple more. I have a set name defined as Extras, and I'll select that option. And now I can add the Extras set to my set list, and it won't affect the time calculation for the overall set list. Similarly, for each of your pause names, you can now specify a duration for that pause. Previously, you could specify the duration for all the pauses in your set list, which would go into the total duration calculation. But if you want to get really precise about your timing, you can now enter separate durations for different pauses, and those values will be used instead. For example, I might spend a minute introducing the band, but only 30 seconds talking about our merchandise. Let's go back and look at this show and finish the setup of the extras set. It looks like I don't have durations defined for these songs, so I'll give the show a default song duration. And now I see the total duration calculated for the show, and it's including both sets. But if I assign the extras name to this second set, now the total duration changes to leave out that set. Now let's look at some new capabilities of the song layouts. Whenever your song layout contains a document viewer, and your song contains both lyrics and chords, the chords will always appear at the top of the document viewer with the lyrics below. But sometimes you don't want to see the chords, and you want maximum space for lyrics, or maybe some people in your band want to see the chords, and others only want to see the lyrics. Well, now a divider appears between the chords and lyrics, and you can simply click the divider to hide the chords. Then any songs you view will only show the lyrics. If you want to see the chords again, you can just click the divider again. It's that easy. If you have customized your layouts to add text fields, sometimes it isn't clear which field is which, so you can now add labels to the text fields. I'm going to edit this layout and make the document viewer a little shorter, and underneath it, I'll add a text field showing the title of the next song. When I'm editing the layout, this field includes an Options button in the top right corner, and I can select that and then turn on the text label. Now I'll save my layout, and I see the next song title, and this little label specifying what it is. And by the way, the list of items you can include in your layouts now includes lots of text fields for the current or the next two songs. So now you can be even more creative when designing your own layouts. One more change to the song layouts is that you can now place items on top of the document viewer, and they will always appear above it. Previously, the layer order was not guaranteed, so you couldn't reliably do this.
In addition, any item you place on top of a document will now have a translucent background to ensure that you can see it against any type of document. So again, the goal is to give you more options to create a layout that's really suited to your needs. In the past, if you spent a lot of time creating a perfect layout, there would be no way to copy it to other devices or share it with your bandmates. But the layout menu now contains options to email a layout or import a layout. If you use the email feature, you can send the layout as a simple text file. And then if someone sends you one of those files, you can use the import feature. You can also use the open in function from an email message to import a layout from there. You can send layouts between Setlist Maker and Bandhelper, and theoretically between iOS and Android. However, you can only import a layout from a device with the same screen dimensions, and most Android devices have a different aspect ratio than iOS devices. In any case, this should allow you to set up multiple devices with a special layout you've created. You can even post your layouts online to share with people in other bands, and I invite you to upload your favorite layouts to my support forum in the Your Stories section. Just a couple more items here, and these are for people using MIDI. First, the iOS apps get a feature that was already in the Android apps. If you tap the MIDI icon in the top toolbar, a MIDI status window appears. You can use this to start and stop the MIDI engine, but more importantly, you can see any incoming and outgoing MIDI messages here. This can be really useful when troubleshooting your setup, and now you no longer need a separate MIDI monitoring app to do it. Finally, my iOS apps now support sending MIDI between multiple iOS devices that are connected only by Bluetooth. To make a MIDI connection, you can go to Settings, Audio and MIDI, and scroll all the way to the bottom and select either Connect to a Bluetooth device or Allow connections from a Bluetooth device. Connected devices can send MIDI in both directions, but one device acts as the master and the others as the slave when making the connections. This feature requires iOS 8 or newer, and it allows you to use all the MIDI capabilities of Setlist Maker or Band Helper without buying any additional equipment or setting up a physical network. Okay, we've covered a lot of info, and if you're still watching, I hope these new features are helpful to you. This is less than half of the new additions in these versions, so for the complete list, please check out the release notes on the app website. You can also check the announcements area of the support forum for the latest news about these versions. If you have any problems, please use the help menu built into the app. That's better than posting a comment on this video. See you next time.